Today I'm going to be ranking my favourite cars in my car collection. From the ones I can't stand to drive all the way up to my favourite. But it's not this. You have to wait to the end. I've created a five step tier listing using a very popular template and I'm going to be ranking my cars off my personal opinions. So therefore, I'm going to be brutally honest with my opinion, no matter how controversial. So let's get into the first car, the Lamborghini Urus Performante. This is the pinnacle of the family passion wagon. This is not an SUV. It's not a supercar. This is a super SUV. You can see this is really beautiful. Amazing wheels, carbon fiber everywhere and the interior is amazing. Now this absolutely amazing Lamborghini Urus Performante is going to be in the bottom tier. But let me explain why. For me, I like a racing car, a chav car, something I can abuse, something I can handbrake. All of that cannot be done in this car. Because of these reasons, it's not a car I love to drive. It's a great investment and perfect for a posh family day out, which are very rare. But like I said, this is ranking off my personal opinion. Give me a Clio RS18 over this to go to work. So if you think that's controversial, it gets worse. Let's talk about my interesting tier names and let me explain what each one of them means. At the bottom, we have the pot noodle tier. Great in theory, but disappointing in reality. Second from the bottom is the Grand Tour. Really good but we have all seen better. In the middle, we have the long-term partner. Great all-rounder, but we're always looking for better. Jane, it's just a joke, simply a joke. One from the top is the Kate Middleton tier. Great motor, which everyone would like a go in. Sorry, again, Jane, it's just a joke. And right at the top is reserved for one car only. My favorite car from the whole collection, and that is the God tier. So let's carry on with the search to find my favorite ultimate car. The Honda NSX Gen 2 and maybe one of the most underrated cars in the world. Bold statement. It's amazing, such a good car. What's with the tape? Um, I'll have to put a statement on the screen. This video is also Kalpanik. wale ki tarah Up the field, this car is one of the best I've ever driven. The seats are super comfortable, it is a great car. And to give you an idea just how rare this is, I was filling it up at the petrol station and a guy came up to me and said he'd never seen one uh, and wanted to have a look round. And he actually worked in a Honda dealership and he said he was gutted because they never had one come through the doors, which is madness, a Honda main dealer. But great looking car, probably an okay investment. So for that reason, it's going to be in the long-term partner category. Next up is a car which I know you all love, and that is because of one big thing. Now we'll start with the sound, the Brabus 850 GLE. Every time. 850 GLE. Cold start king. Ready? Yeah. That sounds the best ever. What? <laughs> That's the good thing about this car, is that sound is epic. So Brabus, take a Mercedes GLE Coupe and then put some mad things on it. But one thing they should have changed was that, and that. Brown. <laughs> and that. And it would have been better if this was over there. Brabus claim this has a mighty 850 horsepower, but I'm not so sure. Because when I drag race a 428 horsepower electric smart car and lost, this car's crap. I have no choice but to put this car in the Grand Tour tier. Great car, but we've simply got better to come. A 2012 Bentley Supersport. Now, if you are into your Bentley Continentals, this model here is the ultimate car. Wheels are cool and the brakes are amazing. Look at the size of that, but it's because this thing does 208 miles an hour. That's right, 208 miles per hour in a car designed to take you to the golf course. But look at these seats. Look at all this, the quality is amazing. It's an auto, it purrs beautiful, it's amazingly comfy, but it's not really me. I'm still into like aggression and horribleness and uncomfortableness. I like a car I get out of after doing 100 miles and I can hardly walk. <laughs> <laughs> this car is great for a collection and I am glad I've got it, but if I did have to sell one, it would be one of the first to go. 
So for that reason, of it not being that exciting, it's gonna go in the bottom tier as well, into the pot noodle tier. The BMW M3 E46. Now, this is said to be one of the best cars to drive ever, and that is because of its perfect power to rate ratio. This car is stunning. Rear wheel drive, manual coupe, and the traction off button actually works. It does everything. You can drift it, you can race it, you can do a daily work drive in it, and you can take the kids to school. So what that makes is a car which is brilliant at everything. For it to be in a better tier, this car would have to be crazy, outrageous, spoilers. But that's not what an M3 is. It's just a great car. But for these tiers, great just isn't enough. It needs to be spectacular. And an M3, it's brilliant, but it's not spectacular. So therefore, this is gonna go into the Grand Tour tier. Really good, but we have all seen better. The Toyota GR Yaris, allegedly one of the best cars ever made and I just don't get it. Many would put this in the top tier. This is a 1.6 litre, but the problem is it's three cylinders. It has a 0 to 60 of 5.4 seconds. 22 year old BMW E46 M3 is faster than this. Imagine if this had like a three litre twin turbo. <laughs> Oh, it could have been so much. I personally enjoy a car which can be great at 10 mile an hour or 100 mile an hour. This is only the latter. So for me, this is a full on curry flavored pot noodle. And next up is another car which really surprised me. So this is the BMW M2, a three liter inline six. Jane uses this car practically every day. Yeah, but it's the best out of <laughs> What's the matter with you? What's what did you do? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'll use this because we got rid of my Evoke and you haven't got a G-Wagon yet. <laughs> We're not getting a G-Wagon. Um, <laughs> and to be honest, out of the dailies, it's the best out of the three because the Clio's got square wheels on it and the A45 is just a chavmobile. She's nice to drive, but she's not my ultimate choice of vehicle. She's best out of a bad bunch. <laughs> and she beeps too much, doesn't she? Like she rings, she dings, you overtake, she tells you off, you undertake, she tells... No, you don't undertake. <laughs> you don't indicate, she tells you off. She, she just bings and bongs for all the wrong reasons, doesn't she? Like as a BMW, like lots of people have, you take it for a remap and an exhaust. I get that, but surely at this sort of money, that should be done and be part of the car. It's an M2, it's an M badge, M Sport. It should be popping, banging, spitting flames and getting you excited, not without taking it somewhere else for an aftermarket add-on. It just doesn't do enough for me, not for the money. There's way better cars, which I've got here, which excite me more. So unfortunately, a brand new M2 is going to have to go bottom of the rung in the tiers and go down to a pot noodle. Beef and tomato though. The Mercedes A45 Yellow Night Edition. And yes, being a bit older, it pops and bangs. And that's standard. Ah, isn't it? <laughs> that is standard. We haven't had to spend 10 grand on it. We haven't had to put spoilers on it. We haven't had to put these special seats in it. This is a standard car, and this is what we miss in days like today. I also might have lost 10 grand if this car had been in an accident, but I knew it hadn't, thanks to the sponsor of this video, Car Vertical. This can't go in the top tier for a few reasons, and valid reasons. This was about 50 grand. Now, 50 grand for a little car, little hot hatch, is a lot of money. Yes, it's a Merc, yes, it's reliable, yes, it's well built, but it's still a lot of money. And when you are spending this kind of money, you wanna know it's safe. 
and the car you are buying is clean and has no hidden bad history. But even though this car has checked out all green, sadly it has still been depreciating. I think this is probably down to about 35 and there's only 80 in the country so they are losing money. Importantly, I bought this car online so I didn't get to see it in person. So this car vertical check is very important and this clean report showed no mileage rollback no outstanding finance, and the car had never been recorded as damage. I could even see a timeline of the car's history. So I knew it was a good buy. But if the check had come back looking like this, I would have known to stay well clear. There is one big thing I don't like when driving this car. The horrific turbo lag. Sometimes it comes in okay, and other times it's terrible. Everything just gets a little bit confused, and sometimes it just feels a little bit prehistoric. So that is why this is gonna go in the Grand Tour tier simply because we have some much better hot hatches. At least I know this car has a clean history, thanks to Car Vertical. So if you wanna check out your car, a friend's car, or a car you're looking to buy, use the link in the description below and use my code Mark to save yourself some money on that search. Where I am gonna tear this might be a little bit surprising, but let me tell you all about my baby, the Clio RS18. Not, not this. I love this car. So there was only 15 of these in the UK and it's a plaqued car, individually numbered, fair play Renault, and this is number 17. 220 brake horsepower, a pure, beautiful car. This to me is everything a car should be. It pops and bangs, it's the right money, it's cost effective, it's a mini rally car. When you drive this hard, which I always do in RS mode, I take the traction off and it pulls to the sides as you accelerate. It's not the quickest car in the world, but my God, this car is so much fun. Spend a lot of time going sideways in this car. <laughs> this there is the best handbrake I have ever had in a car. And Jane will tell you all about that. I so actually do refuse to drive this one. Like, <laughs> if I'm being completely honest, if this was the only car left on the drive, I'd get a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> the back wheels are flat spotted that that bad from long hand brakes. <laughs> you have to turn the stereo on full so you can't hear Cause it. Do, 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 down the motorway the faster you go because the flat spots. <laughs> to drive this car is everything it should be. Trust me, £17,000 this was new. This here, you can get three of those to one of that. Where this is gonna be in the tier, it's gonna be right up there and we're gonna go into the Cape Middleton tier because it is an absolutely fantastic motor vehicle. The Lotus Amira, an absolutely beautiful looking car. Now this car is 90 grand and it looks as good as a, a red supercar. Stop saying the name. I haven't said, solicitor said I'm all about that. This looks Salami, this looks Ferrami, this looks Tarami. This looks Marami, and even the badge is yellow. Even that looks Pirani. That just sounds ridiculous. Well, for legal reasons, I can't say the word <laughs> Even the interior is beautiful. These seats are amazing, and this steering wheel is fantastic. For the money, £90,000, it is an amazing looking car. But I don't feel like it's got the quality. There's lots of tacky little bits which don't feel like you're getting your money's worth. And also, a big, big problem is how much it has lost. It's UK which is cool, but is that derogative to how much this car's worth? Norfolk State, the art facility, amazing, well done guys. Brilliant as well at making mustard, and Alan Partridge, well done there, genius man. But I just feel like this is half they're gonna be, sorry, at the very bottom in the pot noodle tier. The Mercedes C63 Black Series, and for me, one of the best cars I own. It does everything. It looks good, it sounds good, it drives good, it's reliable, it's rare, it increases in value. This car does everything. And more importantly, you can drive it every day. The Aero Kit's amazing. As a collectible car, it is fantastic. One of your favourites? Yeah. I think you need to get it back out. Do you have some fun in it? Drift some roundabouts? Oh yeah, let's just say I learnt a donut in it. We've had some good times in this. This was sort of like the car we used a lot um, back in the day, but now it's become too expensive, which is mad really, but that's just how it is. And those seats are fantastic. And one of the best parts about this car, traction off. Traction off works, especially with these old tires, which are rock hard. I'm not one for Michelin Pilot Sports. I want something which slides. Rear wheel drive, traction off, this car is a dream, but dangerous. Can I just say, those seats are good for you, but they're not good for me, because every time I had to drive it, I had to put a pillow or a sleeping bag behind my back, because the back 
Upright doesn't move, does it? It's fixed. It's a long way over this as well. This is a great car to drive. I really love it. It's a timeless classic and it increases in value. So we're going to put this one right up there in the long-term partner tier. This is my Peugeot 205 1.9 GTI. Now, when I was 17, this is the car which I was desperate for. I couldn't afford and I definitely couldn't insure. And then God knows how many years later, I'm proud to say that I actually bought one. One thing was for certain, if you had one of these when you were 17, your girlfriend was stunning, no matter how ugly you were. So you really needed one then, yeah? Back then, it was a Mercilago. It was a Ferrari F40. It was a Porsche 959. And this here was my supercar. This cost me 7,000 pounds and it's now worth 20 and it's definitely only going up. I'm gonna put this in the Grand Tour tier. Bearing in mind it's got 130 brake horsepower. The CLK DTM. Now, what category I'm gonna put this in might be a little controversial, but I have my reasons. And I think they're good. No, they definitely are good reasons. The whole shape of this car is very dated. Stuff like there's no contrast. If that was black, the lower splitter was black. You know, those lights, it just doesn't look cool anymore. And I'm not sure it did, because it's not even that old. It's not even 20 years old and it looks like this. Especially when you compare this to some of the cars which are available. It's just very old man. Perfect for you though. But for me, what is really, really special is that one of 100 and it's plaque, so fair play Mercedes. But to give you an idea and concept of just where we are with one of 100, F40, they made 1,300. Enzo, they made 500. LaFerrari, 600. And this, just 100 pieces. It was never for sale in a showroom. The only way you got to know about this was by invitation only. And four of those cars were sold to Formula One drivers. When you know this car is all about performance, is where you see where the carbon fiber is. A carbon fiber partial shelf, and the boot underneath the carpet is carbon fiber. So this wasn't for show, it was just to make this car lighter and to go quicker. Now I'm gonna put this in the Grand Tour tier, which is one from the bottom, and there's some big reasons why. Number one, it's so rare and so expensive with low miles, you just can't drive it. But the biggest problem for me is the handbrake not being manual and traction off. This winds me right up. You turn the traction off, it's still on. What is the matter with these people? Yes, you shouldn't be hooning around in a 400 grand car, but if I want to take the choice to slide this sideways, I should be able to do it. Boot a Mercedes. The MG Metro 6R4. Now this has been my dream car for over 20 years, and I wish I'd have done it before, because five years ago, this would have cost half as much as it did this week. This is an actual original Group B rally car, so this isn't just a road version. This was the full on rally spec. Now this is, 410 brake horsepower, three litre engine. And now ridiculously, this is ready to go on the road. It's road legal, it has a V5. Downside is it runs on race fuel. Problem there is it's 35 pound a litre, which means if we race this hard, it costs about 50 pound a mile. <laughs> a mile? A mile. So we might have to go on short trips. Group B rally cars were really, really dangerous and they got banned for that reason because they were killing the drivers but also crashing the spectators. But when you see the footage of how many people used to watch the World Rally Championship, you can understand why people got hurt. Before I tear this, let's get the team's opinion. So you approve then? Mm. I think you've made better decisions in your life before. <laughs> it's just a hunk of cheese. Smart. This has to be in the Cape Middleton tier because it is a race car and it's everything I've ever dreamed of and I've wanted it for so long. But realistically, you cannot use this car as a daily and to be the ultimate God tier car, it has to tick every box. The Huracan STO. Now this car is aggressive, it's snappy, it looks amazing, it's rear wheel drive, it looks and drives just like a race car. Especially when I'm behind the wheel. Full power away you go when you're ready. You've had a lot of good times in this, haven't you? I think I've driven this car the most. Yeah, more than me, definitely. It's me that's put the mileage on this How about one. Me? Have you well, driven it? You've been in it with Mummy quite a lot as well, haven't you? Yeah, you went all the way to Belgium, didn't you? No, I didn't. You went through France. No, I didn't. Do you speak French? Wow, 
So she can't speak English properly, but she can speak French. <laughs> Good old school. Another reason why I love this car. Look at that. People might think it, but I'd rather not know. <laughs> I've always wanted one of those stickers though. Triple layer paint is amazing when it's clean. I have actually seen it the once. This is a cool bit about this car. Very, very race car. So this is a clamshell, folds forward. So when they're doing endurance racing and stuff, they've got more room to change parts. But that is really cool on a road car. Love a bit of that. Seats are absolutely stunning and a roll cage. I've got a lot of time for a roll cage because sometimes I need them. It has amazing wheels. I love this carbon fibre. Roof super stunning, rear arches, this fin and a fantastic rear spoiler. And what's really cool, it only shares a few panels with a standard Hurricane. So this car is not perfect, and that's for two reasons. The first one is because of how many they made. It was a very much a production car. It's not a numbered car, and it's not a restricted quantity. So there's a lot of them, so they do lose money. And another issue with this car is the rear wheel drive. It's got a lot of power. It's got 630 brake horsepower. So on a wet, damp, icy day, this car could catch you out and do some damage to you. And it's not a car which I enjoy Jane driving in the bad weather because it's just a little bit dangerous. So this car is not perfect and we have got some cars coming which are a lot closer. So for that reason, we're gonna put this in the long-term partner tier. Next up is my Lamborghini Aventador SVJ. Now this car is stunning. <laughs> This Lamborghini V12 engine was absolutely revolutionary. 770 horsepower, 0 to 60 of 2.8 seconds. 6.5 litre, four wheel drive car. This car is a very, very special car. And it's limited in numbers and it's going up in value, which is all good news for me. And inside here, I have done 200 miles per hour which sounds like that's absolutely crazy, but in fact, sat in here actually felt quite safe. And one of the biggest reasons I have such a connection with this car is because of the memories it has made. Whiston Diesel, Ryan Taylor, Gumball, all had to make this car very special. What is your favorite mile? I don't know about mile, but miles, it would have been um, going up the mountains, like Verbier. Up Switzerland? Yeah. Yeah, that was unbelievable. Late. In Very the light. dark, lost, yeah. <laughs> stressed. Did you like it when mommy and daddy went to Gumball? No, because I didn't come. Oh yeah, sorry. Next time you can come though. But I've got to say, out of all the bulls that we've got, this is my favourite. Yeah. This Me has got too. to be ranked what? in the top bracket. What's this car do? Rump. <laughs> do it louder, rump. Rump. <laughs> <laughs> And although this car is my favourite, I also dislike it the most because I was forced to go to Tesco's in the boot. <laughs> he actually did, can you remember? I remember, have you seen the video? No. <laughs> <laughs> this car does a lot of magic. It has the scissor action doors, it sounds mental and it looks beautiful. But if we're going to go to the very top tier, we need a car which can do everything. And this cannot. You have to consider where you're driving. You have to consider what the situation is going to be when you get there. Parking, is it on a hill? And as we've seen from DDE, if you do too much to a car in too little space of time, this thing shuts down. So this is going to go in long-term partner tier. Ken Block's Ford Fiesta RX43, an extremely special car and very close to my heart because I used to watch this car on the internet over and over again and then I had the chance to buy it. I bought this car about two years ago, which was about a year before the unthinkable happened. And then that changed this car forever. This is the ultimate driver's car. It was built for exactly what I'm into, for going sideways, doing jumps, making loads of noises, and giving off loads of tyre smoke. It's a dream to drive and an honour to own. What I love about this car is that gold handbrake, and that was supposed to be gifted to the Prince of Dubai after they'd allowed them to do the Gymkhana around his city. And he never turned up to collect it. <laughs> Good on you. And no, you can't send me a message, you can't have it now. <laughs> Oh, 
got to be really careful. It has to be warm. Everything has to be hot. The engine, the water, the oil. So you can't do anything for a long time, especially not rev it. Rev it. This car has a 0 to 60 of under two seconds. It's faster than a Bugatti. And when I bought this car, I thought this is my perfect chance to go up that field, rally round and have an epic experience and craziness. And then sadly what happened to Ken, it all changed. This car is very special to me and it's the same for a lot of other people. People I don't know, people I have never met. So that's why we've got to be so respectful and careful with this car. I want people to see the car. I want people to hear the car. I want people to see this car going flat out, but I cannot go all in. I'll have to go 90% because one thing I can't do is wreck it. When I bought this car, I assumed I was gonna meet Ken himself and obviously, sadly, that never happened. But the opportunities this car has given me, my family, my friends and the channel. Like I was at Goodwood in between Tom Christensen and Travis Pastrana. Mark from Redditch was sat in between those two heroes. And that's what's so amazing about this car. So where I'm gonna rank this might surprise you. I can't possibly put this at God tier because we can't use this car to its full. So it's gonna go right in there, still at the top with Kate Middleton tier. There is one car left to go in that God tier. And to me, this is the ultimate motor vehicle and perfect for me. The Lamborghini Huracan Storato. Now this car has been a joy to me, but also it has been massively influential on our YouTube channel because this has taken us to places which we could have only ever dreamed of. And that was because of one day when I decided to jump out off a jump which wasn't suitable for a supercar. <laughs> I love everything about this car. These mad arches, the stupid headlights, the way it sits upright. It is for me what I've always dreamt of, jumping a supercar. It's robust, you don't have to worry about potholes. You can take it in a multi-story car park. It's a Lamborghini, it sounds immense. It's just perfect. It's a lower top speed than the STO. They've even toned out 50 horsepower. But the point is, look at this, it's on knobbly tires, it's four wheel drive. I would be able to do 160 miles an hour in the snow. Come on. <laughs> Comment below your top three of my car collection and one lucky winner will win 250 pounds worth of merch. This to me is the one. All I've got to do is try not to break it into two. See you next Tuesday, 6 p.m.